so wanted to thank the fans um, out there today. And uh, and I want to apologize to them too. We should have had the team periods on the far field. Um, you know, so we got to think forward in that. So it's a better experience for the fans. And we're up here on one and two. So they had to walk over. So that's uh, part of uh, doing that better. But uh, again, today was, uh, I told the players at the end of the day, it's about focus and finish. You know, so the focus needs to be better. Um, you guys saw uh, the pre-snap penalties. And uh, it was some of that was a function of what our defense does on, you know, in terms of that, you know, so it really had to wire in and focus um, on the offensive side. And uh, we had some uh, really uh, nice plays on the ball on defense as well. So you got to give credit to those guys. They did a nice job there um, in terms of the interceptions. That was really good. You know, and then really I talked to them about uh, at the end is about this is what training camp's about. This is about building up the callus. You know, you have to go through hard. There is no trick. There is no easy way. Uh, to be able to go through hard and execute, you know, on the fourth play, fifth play, sixth play. You know, those are the most important plays of drives. You know, that's when you're in the red zone. That's when you're in your four-point plays. That's when you're in third down, fourth down, midfield to keep drives alive. And we have to focus during that time and, and really execute during that time. And that's the process of this. Um, you know, so hats off to the defense. They played well uh, most of the day, played well in the two-minute. Um, and, again, uh, the offense uh, – you know, obviously had its struggles today, but I also said to him after the practice, I said, guys, all three phases have to play well for us to be a good football team. You know, so there's going to be days where um, the defense struggles or special team struggles, but it's got to be all three phases hit on all cylinders, and we're just not there yet. You know, we're not there yet, and of course, you know, it's early in training camp, and I don't expect us to be, but uh, I do expect us to grow um, and learn from this and get better, and uh, uh, for the day off, as we watch this tape the rest of the day, and the guys have the day off tomorrow, and they come back swinging. Um, it's always, always about the response. You know, I want to see the offense come back, come out swinging on uh, the next stack of practices. And, and that's what we're looking for. Um, so, yeah, um, I think that's all I had, had to say on those things. But, uh, yeah, open up to questions. You, you guys had a handful of pre-snap penalties yesterday as well. Or is this is like an attention to detail thing? How do you... Be, it would be real easy if it was one guy. Yeah, um, I say I would say yesterday was more of a function of us using different cadences, and today was more of a function of what the defense was doing and uh, focusing in. Um, if I was to answer it that. Matt, what did you observe about Caleb? What he did today and how he responded to kind of a tough day. I know you. Yeah. yeah, I thought he responded well. I thought he responded well. So when you know you throw an interception, you know what do you what is your response? And I thought he responded well um, in seven on seven um, after those plays. And again, we were doing all downs today, so we're doing situational football, third and fourth down, quad zone stuff. Um, so uh, I thought the response was good. How do you evaluate a two-minute two drill, two-minute offense when, when Allen and Moore are not out the field? Yeah, I mean, obviously you don't have your best players out there, but I evaluated and I told the quarterbacks afterward that you have to make it game-like. So you have to be able to feel the rush, feel the rush and deliver the ball in a timely fashion. And again, sometimes the protect, protection is good. You can ride the pocket, ride the wave, and deliver your, your strikes on the field. But you have to be able to feel those things and then deliver the ball uh, on time. With the, with the way Billings challenges you up front on the defensive line, what is the, uh, I guess, correction point for the offensive line to, to get through that, to, to move in a way that eliminates these mistakes? You said Billings? Yeah, the way Billings challenges you up front with – kind of baiting the yeah. starts. How, how do they respond to that? Yeah, Billings challenges it in a lot of ways. You know, he's very strong at the point. Um, you know, he's a, he's a very stout nose tackle, uh, one of the stoutest in, in the league. So moving him off the ball is always an issue. So it's, it's important to uh, get that fundamental down first. And then really it's, always, it's about focusing on what the quarterback's doing, not what the defense is doing. You mentioned the, the cadence was part of the issue yesterday. That's correct. That, that was the pre-snap penalty issues yesterday. Well, yeah, we can look at the transcript, I think I said. That's what I said, yeah. yeah. I just wanted to confirm that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> is, what is that a function of? Is, it, is it the offensive lineman not hearing it right? Uh, it's really a function of using that as a weapon. So we need to have different cadences to use it as a weapon. You know, so when you're, when you're working new together, it's going to take time. You know, it's going to take time to be able to do that. So going on one, going on two, going on three, dummy counts, uh, silent, uh, silent count, all the things that you do um, as an offense. Matt, yesterday there was a moment where Caleb jumped in to kind of separate the offense and defense. I'm just curious as a coach what you thought about that moment. And uh, Was it like a scrum or something? 
Yeah, did you see it? Yeah. We're getting heated. Yeah, I, I, I was there. Yeah. The Marcus Walker and Gerald Everett. He jumped right in there to kind of push the Marcus yeah. Walker away. I mean, do you want to see that from your quarterback? Yeah, I don't remember him in there. He's he's not as big as those guys. Maybe I couldn't see him. But uh, yeah, I'm okay with that. You know, that's, that's leadership. Jumping in there when when he sees fit and, and doing that. Matt, do you, mind, do you mind a big picture question for me? Yeah. Um, you know, early last year, you guys had lost 14 in a row. Things weren't good for you or for, you know, around the city. What do they call you? That's Debbie Downer question. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, said, he, he said he set me up. I'll get there. I'll get there. Do you have an appreciation? Was that Saturday Night Live that said that? Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, we got we got reruns. Put, we'll put Pat's face on it right there. <laughs> <laughs> Show videos. Do you have an appreciation for how far things have come since... You know, week four, you lose that heartbreaker at home against the Broncos. You know, some people are calling for your head. Some people are saying the team's not very good. Now, yeah. I mean, you've got this optimism, you know, and it's all right Yeah, I believe, I believe this, and this is going to be, I always say this every single year, every team is different, right? You're at a different spot every single year. Um, you know, you lose players every year. You acquire new players every year. Um, is our roster in a better position than it was in year one and then year two? Yes, no question. And there, there should be optimism, but we have a lot of work to do on the grass before we get to the first game. So we know what our vision is, but we have to focus on our mission. And the mission is, is to get to the first game, the best pre prepared team that we can be and, and playing at a very mm -hmm. high level the best we can for that first game. And then we got to get better every single week as we go. And that's, that's every team. They even started practice today, but he was out by the time one-on-ones rolled around. Is he going to be day-to-day? -day? Did, he, did he do something today? Yeah, he's day-to-day. -day. Um, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Uh, when a guy strains uh, something uh, during that time, we, we always pull him to make sure that we can get uh, the full rest for that particular day and then get him back to the next practice as fast as we can. Uh, you, you, a, you guys have talked about the importance of having that depth in the interior. Having Bates slide over, I obviously haven't committed to that, that center role yet. Is that so part of the reason why you guys haven't – Locked in a center, yes, just no one having the versatility of the guard positions. It is, it is. Uh, uh, versatility on the offensive line is something that we have now and we didn't have before as much. So the depth um, is, is crucial and always getting a pair, you know, and I always say a pair and a spare at each position, and uh, that's what we did today. Does it start to become a dependability issue when you talk about Nate, his ability to, to consistently practice when the pads come on? Because does that become something that you got to kind of work on and start to develop some, some contingency plans because he is in and out so often? Yeah, I mean, availability is everything, right, in this league. And so you got to be available to practice. You know, you got to be able to go through hard in terms of, you know, doing hard better during training camp. And that's all part of preparing for the first part of the season, you know, to be able to do that, to callous yourself. You know, that's your individual responsibility to the football team. And when you're not out there, guess what? That doesn't happen. You know, so availability is, is important at every position. You know, and sometimes guys get injured and that's the way it goes and there's some things you can do, but they have to get back as fast as possible because to me there's a lot of competition. Um, um, on this roster. Man, how much of an adjustment is it at all when you're uh, the two centers snapping to Caleb snap, I believe, with different hands? Yeah, so uh, under center, not a big deal, um, surprisingly. Um, and then the spins are, are what's a little bit different, what they got to get used to. You know, so one comes back as a knuckle, one spins it. So they have to get used to it uh, with each guy. But uh, if we're preparing for the week, you know, for a game week, they're going to get used to that. It's pretty easy to get used to. But when it's Series by series, you know, you got to make sure, hey, I'm looking at this quarterback. Okay, here, he's, he's the guy that spins it. This is the guy that knuckles it. So um, that's really the major difference. Man, it looks like the past couple of days, it uh, looks like the past couple of days, Montez might have gotten a, a piece of Caleb Williams. Are you guys trying to simulate a little bit more pressure for him to feel that, or are those maybe overzealous moments? No, he, he, he knows he should not do that. I threw him out of the drill uh, today, and then I pulled him aside, and I said, look, I said, you cannot do that. You'll be sick if something happens, okay? And that's what I told him. And he understands that. And does he get around there fast and all that stuff? Yeah, he does. But he also has – he's a superior elite athlete. He's good enough to be able to stop and move away. So he's got to be disciplined that way, and he will in the future. And if you – are you guys ready to say publicly whether or not Caleb and your starters are going to go? We're going to do it Tuesday. Yes, sir. Uh, this is a super nerdy question, but the – Those are usually good ones. My specialty, yeah. Um, are the two fields – one and two, are the grass cut differently, or is that just because of the They're different Bermuda. Okay. Yeah. So they're not different lengths? Just different no, they're different grass. Okay. Different grass. The one the one field here is, is a Bermuda that's been used in the NFL for a while. Kansas City has it on their field. And the other one's the one we have in Soldier Field, Tahoma 31, uh, engineered by Oklahoma State. 
and that one's on the uh, number two, and, and darker field. So much about the, the offense and a lot of our questions in that regard, but has, has the defense gone to another level? I mean, is that something that you've been able to discern or see yet in this training camp? Yeah, not not really yet, and I said it yesterday in the interview I was doing uh, uh, for Sirius uh, XM, but I, I said that what we do on the grass is what matters, okay? so. All the, all the talk of all these numbers and all that stuff. I mean, people say top five. What, what does that really mean? What does it mean? Are we at the, we're at the end of the year and you're telling me we're a top five? How do you know that? You know? So to me, it's about, it's about what we do on the grass. And people can say all that, but to me, that doesn't mean anything. That's not a hill of beans to me. It's about how, what we do out there and how we execute as a group and the continuity and the availability we have together and start building that up. And then we'll see. We'll see where we are. That's the reason why the grass is two different um, kinds on two different fields. Is that intentional? Yeah. Yeah, it is because you play on different surfaces. You know, we certainly have to have the surface that is there for Soldier Field. Um, that's And that's a great surface. We, we, we put that up against anybody. I mean, that thing holds up tight. Uh, they engineer it where the roots grow sideways into each other. So it's really firm. It doesn't dig up. And, uh, and everybody wants that field. Um, so, but we also play on other fields, you know, other Bermuda grasses that, you know, we used to have 419 here. Now we got a new strand that's uh, really uh, what Kansas City used. A lot of teams use it. And uh, it's a good grass, too. Coach, it seems like, as, seems like as a staff, you guys are kind of challenging the endurance of that starting four on the D-line. With, with Javon specifically, how have you seen him respond to that? You've been letting him go eight, ten plays in a row without substitutions. How have you seen him respond to that in terms of consistency with get-off, but pad level also? Yeah, I think the get-off, I told him the other day, I think his get-off is better. I think the way he's using his his his, uh, his steps, working towards the quarterback, I like that. He has to use his length better, um, you know, because he's, lo he's a long player. Um, he has to use that extension and be able to play off of that because I think he'll put more stress when he does that on the offensive line. Coach, 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 was here earlier this week. Was he here, like, speaking or talking to the team? Yeah. Yeah, he was here visiting me. Uh, he was uh, – I, I, I uh, texted him right after he retired. I said, anytime you want to come up, Coach, and visit, uh, please do. And he did that. Uh, so he, uh, he came up and visited. We spent about two and a half hours together. And basically our conversations were on leadership, you know, with the football team. And really his process and his cadence and rhythm of working with the quarterback, you know, with Tua, with Jalen, and what was his experience during that time, um, during the camp part of, phase of it, and also during the season. So I got, a, I gleaned a lot of information, a lot of wisdom from him, um, and it was great to see him. It was great to see him. He's uh, been a mentor of mine for a long time. Uh, we were together back in 1990, have stayed in touch the entire time. And uh, he's a special man and a special leader. And uh, it was it was fun to be able to get to visit with them. We talked a little about a, a little bit about family also, and of course we ended up with spending about thirty minutes talking about coverages. So that's what we always <laughs> that's what we always do. Thanks, Matt.